of the Municipal Stormwater MS4 permit will have innovative, low-cost approaches to effectively communicate the required messages for you. This is Matthew Frank. I'm the moderator of the webinar. Uh, my firm is Aqueous Advisors, and I'm doing this on behalf of the West Public Communications and Outreach Committee with the input of the Stormwater Council. That's us. And uh, with that, uh, I have one poll question to start with. Uh, so we have a quick poll. How many people are watching the webinar with you? Select one of the following. Just me, two of us, three of us, four or more. And we'll wait for a little bit here. So it seems that most of you have voted, and most of you are uh, watching this on yourself, uh, by, not on yourself, by yourself. Uh, that's good to know. Uh, you, of course, are welcome to share this with other people uh, at your site. We'll be having a bunch of these poll questions throughout the webinar uh, just to uh, get uh, have a sense of uh, what you think about these things and uh, to keep you involved. Please uh, be sure to answer the poll when it comes up so that we can proceed to the next slide. And with that, uh, we can move on to the content of the webinar. We have four presenters for you today. First, we have uh, Marlou Gregory, who will talk to us about the legal requirements from the EPA. And then we have three municipal presenters uh, from three uh, quite different uh, cities, uh, one giving a, a regional perspective, one giving a local low-cost perspective, and one giving a targeted neighborhood perspective. And uh, we hope that uh, from all four of these presenters, uh, you'll have a, a better idea about how to satisfy the requirements of the MS4 permit. First up is Marlou Church Gregory. She has nearly 30 years of consulting experience, 20 years directly on water resources. She's a senior project manager at AMEC Earth and Environmental and is their technical lead for municipal water resources and stormwater utility development in the Northeast. Marlou developed stormwater plans in West Virginia, New Jersey, and Massachusetts to meet the new MS4 permit requirements with public outreach, public involvement, and targeted education. She holds leadership positions in many professional committees. She's a member of the public uh, outreach committee that's sponsoring this webinar, as well as the Stormwater Council. So Marlou, over to you. Great, thank you, and good afternoon, everybody. And if uh, any of you are on the East Coast, um, you know what a perfect day this is to be talking about stormwater. Um, just a little bit on the background about where we are and where uh, EPA thinks we need to be going uh, forward. As you know, the MS4 Phase 2 has been out since 2003, and technically the new permit should have been out around 2008 or five years after you got your first permit. Um, here we are in 2011, and what's happening is slowly, state by state, everyone is moving into this new permit cycle. Um, all of a sudden, there seems to be a speed up, kind of driven by the PNDLs from Chesapeake and the Great Bay and some other PNDLs. And the pending new stormwater rule, uh, the draft, of which is supposed to come out in September. So we're seeing a lot of flurry of activity, of a lot of new permits coming out. And the previous permit holders are saying, OK, what's the difference? Now what do I do? And also, a lot of new communities in MS4s are coming online who weren't even involved with it the first time and are now being introduced to all of the public education that they need to do. Now, public education actually was a requirement right from the very beginning. But the reality is that most people, most communities, um, really did not do a lot of public outreach. A lot of it because they were trying to figure out what the whole MS4 permit meant. But there were some outstanding examples, and some of those examples you're going to be seeing and hearing about today. But for most of MS4 permit holders, really their public education was more like a newsletter or a public meeting where they mentioned stormwater. And honestly, if you think about it, that's not really an effective way to educate the community on changes that need to be done. And obviously, it really wasn't the intent of the original um, M4 phase two. But what's happening in these new permits is there's a lot more emphasis on 
what EPA goal, uh, what EPA's goals are, and and what they want you to do. So, what are those goals? Well, first of all, obviously, they actually can you go back a second? Previous slide. Um, so obviously, the first thing that they want you to do is to educate the public about the impact of storm water on local waterways. Now, that's an obvious uh, goal, and not really so easy um, to do, however. Questions like, who is the public? And then that the public, whomever they are, um, generally don't even understand what storm water is or the cause and effect. So that first goal we need to get over. The next goal that they have is that they want you to change human behavior with respect to reducing the amount of pollution. Okay, when you think about it, changing human behavior, really not so easy. And it's a lot of very targeted effort um, and a lot of time to, to change human behavior. They also want you to identify the steps that the citizens and business and others will need to do to reduce their own contamination. Putting the onus on you, you as the MS4 holders need to be more specific. You need to tell them what the right thing is to do. And you're also going to have to show them and tell them um, not only what it is, but how to do it. Another goal, gain more support for the stormwater management program. More, I emphasize in that, because what is more? How do you know what is more support if you don't have a benchmark, if you don't know where you're starting from? So that's another goal that you need to figure out. And also, as far as measuring and knowing um, how you're improving is the increase of compliance. And again, a measurement situation which not only requires education, but it's going to be some inspection involved. So those are the goals. Now, as far as some of the specific requirements that we've seen, again, the newsletter is not meeting their goal, and that's not the requirement that they're looking for. What they really want you to do is to define very specifically what the goals of your stormwater program are to meet the greater goals of EPA. And those goals also need to be defined. They need to be measurable. They want to know a time frame. And they want to know who's going to be responsible. So it's no longer a statement like, we're going to be doing a, um, a newsletter. Very specific goals. Also, it's not the general public, but it's the targeted audience. And they're looking for you to identify who those targeted audiences are. And when you look at this, you realize that the target audiences are not just that general public um, that we hear about in the MCMs 1 and 2, but really when you look through all six of the MCMs, you see that there really are targeted audiences there that need to have outreach and education. So once you've defined your goals, you've got your targeted audiences, you now need to create the appropriate messages and the appropriate material to, um, to convey those. You're going to see some great examples today. But one of the things to remember, not only is this a requirement, but really it's good management for you because research shows that these blanket outreach programs really aren't effective. And what does that mean? That means a waste of time and money on your part. So better to focus it and get benefit from it. And therefore, you need to evaluate what the effectiveness of the program is. EPA and your DEPs are going to be looking, again, for you to evaluate so they know they're, you're meeting their goals and you know that you're spending your money wisely. And the last point to put out here is that they're looking for you to use public input. Again, if you think of this not just as a requirement by EPA or DEP, but look at your public as a resource for you. Talk to your public first, your targeted public, and find out what is the information that they really do need and what's the best way to get that to them. Don't guess, but ask them, get that input in, dev in developing your stormwater management program. So those are the basics um, very quickly. And if you're looking for some additional information, oh, I've actually got a couple of websites here for you that you'll see on the last page. And um, that will give you some more detailed information. And now we'll listen to some examples. Hang on. So uh, uh, b before they can see that, we've got this poll to do. Oh. <laughs> uh, I I've looked at my state's MS4 requirements for public education, which of the above, in the past year, past five years, or not in the past five years? And 
That's most of you. It seems that most of you uh, have looked at the results in the past five years, and uh, given the frequent changes that uh, Marlou is talking about, that's probably a good thing. And now, there you go. So there are some websites that you can take a look at. Um, the first one is actually the guide that EPA developed that was sent out to state permit writers across the country to tell them more specifically what they should be including in your permit. Um, another one is some points from EPA on how to implement a successful program. And I threw the West Virginia general permit in there. Just if you want to take a look at one of the permits that EPA has said that they really like the wording in. And uh, that might give you a hint as to what you might expect in your own permit if you haven't gotten your, your new one. And, uh, Again, with that, um, I will turn it over to the rest of the panel to give you some great examples on how you might go about meeting these goals and requirements.